everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. And today we have a new topic, which is very really interesting. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. If there's any problem, please let me know. Uh, so there's a question being asked to uh, His Majesty, the genius, uh, Dr. Zachary Naik. I know Zachary Naik, he have answer for anything. I mean, come on. You see, not everybody can give you an answer for anything. Just, I challenge you actually to give him a question and the guy he says, I give up, I don't know. There is no way. He is like Allah, he's almighty, you know, supposedly, he's all knowledgeable, you know. So the question is, as you see in the screen, well, why do people commit sin if the devils, and I like it here, the devils, like it's not one, the devils. <laughs> If you remember, before we explained to you why the Muslims, they believe there is devils. They believe that Shaitan, he had sex with himself first, the first Shaitan. His name is Iblis, which we knew where the name is coming from. And then uh, Allah, he created for him a penis and the right thigh of his leg and a vagina and the left thigh. And then he shake this with that and he enter this into that. And you know what I'm talking about without more explanation. And then he lay 10 eggs. And from every egg, there is 70 Satan, male and female Satan. So the first Satan was male and female at the same time, according to Islam. After that, he have females and males. And this is why the devils here come in front of you. There's many, many devils, millions. You know, actually every one of us, he have a devil companion. Uh, Muhammad, he called him Qareen, which means, you know, your twin, he walk with you. So the question is very simple, which is make sense, but maybe you might ask yourself, who said first that the devils are chained? Well, this is what Muhammad, he told the Abdul, that the devils are chained in Ramadan. So the Abdul started thinking deeply, and you know, most of those who believe in this religion, they are philosophers. So they said to themselves, okay, the devil is in chain, all his family in chain, all the devils are in chain. So why are people doing bad things? And now Mr. Zakir Naik is going to uh, explain to you the situation. Listen carefully. How come people continue to commit sins? And I do agree with you, this is a common question. And I remember several years back. Let us go from the beginning, sorry. If all the devils are chained during the month of Ramadan, how come people continue to commit sins? And I do agree with you, this is a common question. And I remember several years back when I was in school and when I heard this hadith that the devils are in the month of Ramadan, immediately the question that came to my mind and the question that comes to many Muslims' mind and many non-Muslims is that if the devils are chained, then how do people, how do human beings yet commit sins? This question is based on the hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which I mentioned earlier, a say hadith of Musnad Ahmad. See here, uh, uh, you know, Zakir Naik, all those questions is pre-made, pre-set. And now he want to show you that he remember things, he remember the number, you know, and that's supposed to make him a scholar. But we know that this is all a setup, right? I mean, this is... Uh... But anyway, so it's mentioned in the Hadith what? That the, 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 the Satans, the Satans, will be chained in the month of Ramadan. Volume number two, page number 230, Hadith number 7148, which is also repeated in... Okay, we got it, we got it. So he also repeated in different hadith, hadith number, etc. So he was going to give you now the lesson plate. This is this is how they show off. I mean, it's a, it's fake, it's it's a joke, it's a, you know. Give us the answer, man. Okay, it's repeated here and there. Okay, we got it. And you know the, you remember, you remember the lesson plate. Okay, I got it. Okay. Sunan Nisai, hmm. chapter number five, hadith number 2106. Uh -huh. Where the beloved prophet said that... O people, the blessed 
month of Ramadan is approaching. And Allah has ordained for you that you fast in this month. And the gates of heaven will be open in this month and the gates of hell will be closed. Uh huh. No, oh, sorry. By mistake, we click at the bomb and we went out. Closed. And the devils will be chained. In this month is a night, which is better than a thousand months. Mm -hmm. And a person who is deprived of the blessing in this month is truly a deprived person. Mm. Now, when we give this hadith, it clearly mentions that in this month of Ramadan, the devils will be chained. Mm -hmm. And it's a logical question. If devils are chained, mm. then how do human beings yet commit sins? Mm. To make the people understand, we have to realize that when the devils are chained, it does not mean that the devils are slain. They have been killed. Mm. They are yet present, but they are chained. Look how deep this is. Let's look at this answer. Brother, I mean, look at this. The devil is chained doesn't mean he is slain. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's something. So now he's explaining how come the devil still can do things and he's chained. But the brother, the devil is chained, is not killed, is not slain. Take a note, please. Okay, we took the first note. Give us a second one. They're not killed. Mm. The power is yet there, but it is diminished. Ah. For a better understanding, yeah. I'd like to give you an example. Give us an example. That when there is a lion uh -huh. or a tiger mm. who is free, mm. there are high chances mm. that he may kill you. Oh. Your life is in danger. Right. But the moment that tiger or that lion mm. is chained, you are safe. Oh. You are safe as long as you maintain a safe distance. That's the... After the tiger has been chained, mm. if you come too close to him, there are chances, yet you can be killed. So mm. as long as you maintain... Hey, but hold on, Zakir Nay. The tiger is an animal that have teeth. Shaitan, what he do supposedly, according to Islam, he whisper to you. He do waswasa. I mean, this guy, what, where, where this guy he got his knowledge from? From which school? Shaitan, he don't hunt you by his teeth. He is not a tiger. Let us read together the Quran and show you how this idiot talk. See all those uh, verses in the Quran is telling you how Shaitan he do his action according to Islam. All right, what he do? Chapter seven, verse number twenty. As an example, not necessarily. But Shaitan, he began to whisper. Okay. So, Shaitan, when Allah chained him, he chained him in hell. How he can come to you and he whisper to you? You see, he said, if you keep a, a safe distance, well, this is what the point of a chain in the shaitan is to keep him in safe distance from you supposedly because he is he's a chain not in your next to your ear i mean it is a it is a place where shaitan he live we go there and we get we get close to him so now zakir naik uh, he's trying to defend the superstition and stupidity of his prophet so he was starting your story and all of the all in front of us here it says how shaitan he act like as in here, the chapter 11, well, 114, verse number 5. And this is nothing but a chapter of fictions uh, about, uh, you know, magic and etc. From the mischief of the whisperer, the, the devil, who will draw after whispering. Okay, what he do? He do whisper in the heart of mankind. Okay, but now we chained him. Now we chained him. How he come... And he can whisper to us. So, in order to defend a fictionist story Muhammad he come with, that Satan or the devils, as he make them many, they are chained in Ramadan. And then we find that people in Ramadan, if you search right now in Google, you'll find in the month of Ramadan, Muslims do way more 
violent, way more violent increase all over the Middle East and Islamic countries. Not only terrorists, even normal violent, you know, people fighting. So they could not explain how Muhammad, he said, Shaitan is chained. And now Zakir Naik, he will give you more evidence of what he is saying. Listen carefully. And this is way more deep. This is above your grade, you know. This is why some of you might not understand the intelligence of this amazing person. Maintain the distance from the tiger who is chained, you are safe. Mm. Similarly, in the month of Ramadan, if yeah. you maintain a safe distance from the Satan, mm. you will be saved. Oh. And if you read the Quran, Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 168, Be careful of the khutwa to shaitan, of the footsteps of the devil. For he is to you an avatar. Hold on. Let us see. Let us see this verse he posts for us. Be careful from the footstep of shaitan. I like that. Footstep of shaitan, I mean. Oh, Lord have mercy. Don't follow the footstep of Shaitan. I mean, who is the donkey here? You just said he is, a, he is a chained. So how we can follow his footstep? I mean, sometimes you lose your patience. Sometimes you feel like you want to jump from the high building, like Muhammad when he, that Quran stopped coming. How we are going to follow his footsteps if the guy is a chained? Like, hello? This is the whole point. The shaitan now is chained. So he cannot have any footsteps. He is already chained, you idiot. I mean, should I jump from the window? This is your best guide to answer a question. Don't follow the footstep of shaitan. You see, the shaitan is chained physically, not metaphorically. Physically. So in order to follow his footstep, and he is saying, as long as you keep a distance. Well, shaitan is already chained. This is the whole point. Continue, Zakir Naik. Unbelievable. I don't know, I don't know. It is the era of a stupidity when a stupid can be called a scientist or a scholar or even a philosopher. You are what you call yourself, you know. About enemy. Hmm. Many places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that be careful of the footsteps of the devil. Uh -huh. Allah doesn't say that be careful of the devil. Mm. Because a normal Muslim, an average Muslim, who mm. has average Iman, when mm. he sees the devil in front of him, he will be careful. Ah. For example, suppose there's a young girl who comes to an average Muslim, a young boy, who has average Iman. Here you see the evil religion of Muhammad. He want to give you how shaitan, we have to keep our, ourselves from shaitan. So now he chose for you a young girl because she is the devil. She is the devil, remember. So there's a young Muslim, he's the good guy. But there's a young Muslim girl, she is the shaitan. Listen carefully what he say. I'm not the one saying that. Listen carefully. And actually his prophet says that too. Listen carefully. Who has average iman? If a young girl comes and tells him that let's spend the night together, hmm. that Muslim will say, Spending the night together uh -huh. with a girl? It's haram. haram. It is zina. Yeah. He will immediately... But we can't do muta, you know. If muta is okay or if it is orfi, yeah. Uh, if a friend marriage is okay, you know. But uh, uh, together, no. Haram. Uh, haram. Reject. Hmm. But that same girl, uh -huh. if that girl phones that young boy uh -huh. and speaks to him on the phone, okay. the boy will say, speaking to a girl on the phone? There is no problem. Yeah, no problem. So he speaks to the girl for a few times uh -huh. on the phone for mm. a few minutes. 
Okay. Later on, the girl says, let's go and have some snacks uh -huh. in McDonald's. Okay. On Kentucky Fried Chicken, having snacks for a few minutes, mm -hmm. for half an hour, okay. with a girl in McDonald's, no problem. No problem. So he goes and has snacks with the girl okay. in McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Later on, the girl says, why not have dinner in a restaurant? Having dinner with a girl in a restaurant mm -hmm. for a couple of hours, no problem. No problem. Then the girl says, why not spend the night together? And then the boy says, spending the night together with a girl, no problem. So this is Khutwa to Shaitan. Footstep. Those are the steps of Shaitan. Do you see it? Now, let us take your attention. He chose the girl for a reason. Because Muhammad, he said that women are Shaitan. They come in the image of the devil and they retreat in the image of the devil. Um, do you see it? Women, they come in the image of the devil and they retreat in the image of the devil. So Zakir Naik wanted to show you how the devil, which is the woman in this case, according to the faith of Muhammad, she is coming to you and she is going to take you down. Here we notice that Muhammad not only is a stupid idiot, because if the woman is the devil, why you have too many of them in your house, you idiot? Hmm? Hypocrite coward, sex maniac, they are the devil, why you have too many of them? What for? It's your hobby to collect devils in your house and you sleep with them? Coward. At the same time, Zakir Naik, he made the Muslim boy the victim and the Muslim women the devil who come to you. And now he is saying to you, you have to keep a distance from the devil. And the example is a woman. But notice here carefully that this is again a stupid. Why? Because if the devil is a chained, so who is that woman? You see what I'm talking about? Low IQ, stupid religion, and in order to defend the stupidity of their prophet, they are willing to fabricate any story, which is funny and stupid. Because remember, the story is that the devil is enchained. He's enchained. He is, he is, he is locked down. He's locked. So now how the women she can do what the devil can do? He just said, you have to keep a distance from the devil. But the devil is a chain. This is the whole story now. So how the devil was able to make the women do what the devil want if he is a chain? My friend, the one who keep talking about, okay, question for Dr. Nye. What is the difference between Shaitan was chained and when he is not chained. Thank you. I was going to talk about this actually. Thank you. Good question. Actually, yeah, we know what a different thing. Because now you are saying Shaitan, if you keep distance from him, but Shaitan is chained. I mean, did the girl she go to the house of Shaitan? Is he chained or not? Some might say to you, well, it doesn't mean he is a chained uh, literally. That's not true. The Quran says that the shaitan chained literally. As an example, when shaitan worked for Solomon, and shaitan he do diving for Solomon, you know, he go do fishing for him, diving, he get him jewelries. Solomon, you know, he's, he's in control of shaitan. So the shaitans, they used to work for Solomon, read carefully, this is not my words, and you see here the translation is false. It says, and also the evil ones. The evil ones. It doesn't say that. That's a false translation. This is why it's very careful, you know. You know, I'm going to finish my translation for the Quran one day. 
but this is how they deceive you. In Arabic it says, والشراطين كل بناء وغواص There is no evil one including a human as he said in the translation. That is a stupid and there's nothing is called the evil one, it's called shayateen, satans. If you change the translator, this is Yusuf Ali, just to show you how much hypocrite and they are willing to compromise and corrupt their book for the sake of hiding this stupid story. And also shaitan, and by the way, it doesn't say shaitan, it says shayateens, you know? So he said actually here, shayateen in Arabic, like supposedly, but he used the I, he should use E, I think. So he said the devils, and then he said from the jinns, it doesn't say anything from the jinn there, it says the devils. So it says shaitan, and specifically shaitan, not the devil. Satan's is a word, there's no need to translate it, because it's coming from the uh, uh, other language, which is Satan still. So shaitan is the same as the word Satan in English. And it is Satan's, not shaitan, not one. And every one of them who he is diving or building or whatever he's doing so is that and what they do to them and also other bond in fatters he put them in the chains and you can change the translation as you wish i mean it doesn't matter really all of them is the same corruption they try to hide the fiction and the stupidity of this book and others linked together in chains. So this is literally, Shaitan is literally chained. Actually, you can go and see like uh, 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 books like Ibn Kathir, Al-Qurtubi, Al-Tabari, Al-Jalalain, and you will see they are saying and confirming the same. Let us go to Ibn Kathir as an example. And also other bonds in fetters means tied up in chains do you see it tied up in chains these were the ones look at look at this this is islam my friend they make videos for you about science and you know the madness these were the ones who had rebuilt or like became rubble and refused to work or else their work was bad and they were wrongdoers. So Suleiman, he put them in the chain. See what he do for shaitan, brother. And also the shaitan, from every kind of a builder and diver. Suleiman, he have, he don't have, uh, he have shaitan, they, they are his slaves now. They work for him. When, when Suleiman was in charge, all shaitan, they work for him, for free. They build for him, they dive for him, do the fishing for him, they bring him women, I mean, you name it. They go to, go to, to Walmart, to Home Depot, they do everything. So from every shaitan, or from all the shaitans, all kind of builders and divers, mean among them there were some who used to build high rooms, images, statues, large, etc. And then, uh, and they fix things, you know, and some, they are, you know, they dive in the sea, recovering pearls and jewels and prices, uh, uh, precious things uh, which cannot be found anywhere else, brother. This is the religion we are discussing now. So when Muhammad is speak about shaitan, is being chained, he is speaking about something chained literally, not metaphorically. This is the Sir Ibn Abbas, he says, and other than these linked together in chains. In iron chains, these are rebellious devils who were never interested with any work except they are that they are rebelled. Look at this. This is knowledge, brother. This is jewelries, you know. If you don't like this interpretation, we can choose someone like ours for you, you know, like in uh, anything, you know. We, we are here to make you happy, my friend, especially if you're a Muhammadan. And others, they are from among them, bonded together in fetters, shackles, with their hands tied to their necks. True story. I don't know if you can understand the situation.
just to make you understand a little bit. Shaitan is in chain. We got him. And now he's locked. Brother, sisters. And now the Muhammadan trying to find a solution for the lie of Muhammad. He said shaitans are chained in the month of Ramadan. So who is the one doing all this killing? Who is the one is doing all those bad things? Mm -hmm. So we have to find the fabrication and the fabrication is the following. A girl and a good Muslim boy. The good girl, the bad girl, she is a shaitan here. She call you, she say to you, uh, what about you come and spend the night together? You say it's haram, haram. And by the way, I did not remember any uh, Muslim uh, ever know saying haram for such an <laughs> invitation. <laughs> Look who is talking. <laughs> Is it this is the same guy who says it's a woman she wears a short skirt when she will get raped? What you expect? So where is the good Muslims? A woman walking in the street, she did not call them. She got raped. And now he's saying the uh, the Muslim guy will say haram since when? Is it Muhammad who saw a woman walking in the street? He jumped over his wife just because he saw a woman in the street. And this is why Muhammad, he said, women, they come in the image of shaitan and they live in the image of shaitan. Call Samina, I don't know, so I call who? Sayama Bariyat. Who is Sayama Bariyat? Why well, don't let him call me? Who is ever this guy? Any Muslim would like to talk to me, is more than welcome, you know? Especially now, this is the month of Ramadan. Allah will be with him, my friend, and shaitan is jailed. Hey, by the way, Muslims, as long as shaitan is jailed, and you say that a Christian prince, he is speaking for shaitan. So how come I'm speaking now? Hmm? Isn't it today is Ramadan? And shaitan is jailed. And those who they fight Allah, Shaitan, he made them fight Allah, but but Shaitan is jailed. So Christian Prince, he is getting his orders from where? From where? Hmm? So because Muhammad is a stupid man, he keeps saying fiction stories, we have to do a cover up to his stupidity. And look what Muhammad actually he said, not only he said, Shaitan is going to be jailed. He said, Wa Any one of you who heard the word Afrit? Did you hear the word Afrit before? Let me see if I can show you what Marada mean. See here, it's not translate. I mean, they say genie chain up. This is stupid translation, false translation. The Marada, uh, Supposedly, is a shaitan who is bold. Shaitan who is bold. Let us see if we can find you. As the word in the Quran used the word afrit. Okay, here you will see an example. According to Muslim, this is a shaitan. They call him married because he is bold. And always they make them look like Asian because Islam is a racist cult. So this is the murder. There is another word in the Quran. They use the word afrit. Let me show you the word afrit. If you remember when Suleiman or Solomon, the bird he went and he found a woman, she have no hair in her legs, which is unique, you know, the Middle Eastern women, they have a lot of hair, that's why, I mean, the news was all over CNN, a woman with no hair, a woman with no hair, so the bird came to Suleiman and he told him, 
that she have etc and she have a uh, a throne big throne so afrit afrit i don't know in english is if you use afrit so a very fast afrit look here translation says stalwart stalwart i don't know if this is good translation i don't know what this word means actually but in arabic is afrit afrit is a very fast shaitan extremely fast and this is why he's saying Afrit, he said to him, I will bring it to thee before thou rise from your place. Look how fast he is. He will bring her, he will bring him, the, the Solomon, he will bring him the throne of this a queen in Yemen before you move, before even you, like, don't even try to move. This is how fast he is. So this is Afrit, he is a shaitan. He is one of the genies who he is extremely, extremely fast. Now, if I search for the word Afrit in the Arabic, let us see what we will see. Oh boy. Look, I just searched for the word Afrit. Look what I got. Oh boy. Yeah, but this one will do better here. Let us do this one. Yeah, this is Afrit. This is Mr. Afrit, according to the Muhammadan. Let me click at the picture, open it, hold on, so we can take you there. Mr. Afrit. Okay. And look, his eyes move too. I mean, look at this. And always they make him, uh, you know, uh, with the black color. So this is Afrit. Those are the friends of Suleiman. Shaitan, they are working for him. Those are his helpers. Suleiman became satanic. His helpers are Afrit. All right? And look, by the way, here, like they are explaining to you who is the Afrit. So in Arabic, it says here, What are the dhikru kalimatu Afrit for Quran in the chapter of the ends, in verse number 39? All right? And here they are posting for you the verse of this Afrit. So this is the Afrit who was in the present of Solomon, who he told him, Hey, Solomon, do you like me to go and bring you this woman? You know what? I don't know. I saw this guy before. Where I saw him before. Where I saw him before. I'm not sure. You know, I'm losing my memory. You know. But by the way, Islam is really a decent religion and teach you something very true. There's no fiction stories. And you cannot, you cannot really reject this knowledge. So, so in mind, they told him there's a woman. She have nice legs. She have big ass. Alhamdulillah and uh, she had big throne made of gold so afrit this guy he said to suleiman hey boss hey boss do you like me to go and get her for you or get the throne for you so suleiman he said to him hey tony tony i did not order you to move tony don't go there tony i mean what is this they made suleiman is a mafia guy, and by the way, the one who started the mafia business in Italy is uh, the Islamic invasion, in case you do not know. When they came to Sicily, they forced the Christian to pay jizya for protection. This is the first mafia system. So when, the, when they kicked out the Muslims from their land, the criminals, they took over the business. We protect you now, you pay us. This is where the mafia business started. So Solomon, they are discussing how much the gold she have. Her throne is made of gold. So the genie said to him, boss, do you like me to go and get her? And then the boss said to him, hey, Tony, Tony, get busy with pizza, okay? 
the stone is so, I mean, he's ready for anything. He want to go and steal the throne. So even the Juan don't have any hesitation to make anyone they consider him as a prophet as much as they can as a thief. He is a thief. This person, supposedly, Suleiman, is a thief. And now the Afrid, the genies, they are working for him to steal, to, uh, to, to fight, to build, to do. It's amazing. In order to explain why Shaitan, or how Shaitan he can, still do the action of deceiving people, and yet he is in chain. The silly Zakir Naik, he come with a story, it does not even match his own religion. Because when we say chained, it is a chain, literally. So the, the, the question is still, how Shaitan was able to make that girl talk to that guy? Unless you are saying that that girl is the Shaitan himself. This is why he said, you have to keep distance from Shaitan. So he said that girl, she is the one who asked the guy to meet her. So he made that girl the shaitan. Very filthy way of explaining evil because he is trying to make you believe that women and the devil is the same. And this is why he's a prophet, if we can call him a prophet. He said women, they come in the shape of the devil and they live in the shape of the devil. And, you know, uh, when we talk about the madness of Muhammad and his religion, and how Muslims they try to explain, look, I mean, this, this webpage is just explaining to you what shaitan, what the devil he do. You know, he's a genie. Look, this is the book of a suyuti. Hmm? Uh, Actually, I can show you tons of reference about Muhammad explaining to us the genie, and you will die laughing. This is why the Muslims, they believe that the genies, they sleep with the Muslim women. Uh, they sleep even with the women when she's alone. If you have my book, Sex and Allah, you will see there's a question about uh, uh, a guy, he opened the door of his uh, room, and he saw a fire around his wife's vagina. I don't know how many of you have my book. So he saw a fire in her pubic area. Okay? So what the explanation for that by the sheikh? Well, this is the genie. He's made of a fire. And he's having sex with your wife. So it's very normal that the bushes there will go on fire. <laughs> True story. I mean, there's no. It's, this is Islam, my friend. What you can do? This is uh, this is Islam. All right. Yeah. Any Muslim have any uh, like objection of what I'm saying? You know, you don't agree or anything? Just let me know. Correct me. Get me busted. All right. All right. Look, oh, look, oh, all of this. Look. What is the difference between a freed? And jinn and married. What are different? I mean, the, even those, they have different, my friend. So he said, Rajulan Afrit, he is not decent and he deceive and he is very smart. Same as Afrit, which is from the jinn. He is the one who deceive, maker like Allah. And he is the one who fool you. And he is like Laim. Laim is like what? Uh, I don't know. What the translation for Laim? You know, Laim is like someone he uh, he do things from your back, or you know, like he gossip about you, or he try to hurt you. You know, and from the most important description of him, that he have a lot of tricks, brother. And the Afrid is mentioned in the Quran. Let me see if I can if I can translate this page for you, so you can see with me what I'm talking about. But I have to open it with Google browser so that Google translation will work. Okay, so this is Google browser, here we go. Let us translate. Okay. 
at the sea or what they say is what is the difference between I mean look at this page how okay what's the difference between the the, the genie the afrit and the, the jinn and the married the see translation is not coming good uh, goblin what goblin oh boy yeah uh, the meaning of the word afraid is that he is wicked and he's conning and he a goblin man uh, you know he do many kind of conning and uh, you know like hurting likewise Al afraid he is from the jinn he is he is very deceiving deceiving meaning one of his most important quality is the trick he trick you okay Question Muslims, as long this guy is so evil, how come he is helping and he is the assistant of Solomon? I mean, what kind of kingdom we are talking about? So Allah, he made Solomon have a bunch of gang, Satans around him to go and steal. He will go and grab the, the, uh, uh, the throne of the women. So this is what Islam is about, is fiction stories and in order to cover the stupidity of Muhammad when he said that Satans are chained and Muslim cannot explain how they are chained, yet everything is happening, nothing changed. Actually, in the month of Ramadan, violence go way more crazy and you can do your own search. You do not need to depend on me. You can go right now and search in violence in Ramadan. You will see how increase uh, how how crazy it, and they give you excuse. They say to you, the reason for violence in Ramadan because they are fasting. So people they have less patient. They lose patient. So there's more killing, more harm. People are thirsty. So as you see, Shaitan is not a chain as Muhammad. He said, Muhammad is a liar. He makes stories up, and none of those stories can be explained except by lying and fabricating answers. And those answers are more stupid than the accusation itself. And this is what we saw from Zach and I. So I hope that this video, I will keep it shorter as I can. I hope we answer those who they wanted to know how Shaitan he can do. Uh, mischievement yet he is a chain Muhammad obviously he is lying secondly you know when we say the Bible says who is the father of all lies well, this is what the Lord he said right Satan right the father of all lies but doesn't mean that he is the only liar he is the father of all lies which means the first lies start from there with Adam but we cannot blame Satan for everything You so see, Satan is a good hang, uh, like they say, you hang your sin on him, right? You say, oh, Satan, he made me do that, etc. You are Satan himself when you do evil. This is why the Lord will judge you by your fruits. He will not say to you, oh, this is the fruit of Satan. He will judge you from your fruit. This is your fruit. You see, even in the story of Adam and Eve, Satan, he did his part fooling Adam, correct? But if Adam did not accept Satan, he have no impact on you. And there, supposedly, Satan is literally there, speaking literally to Adam. But if Adam says, no, I will not disobey God, stay away from me, Satan, Satan, he have no authority. The same Satan, he come to Jesus and he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself. So if Jesus did what Satan did, want, then Satan, he, you know, Satan was able to be successful to deceive Jesus. Even to Jesus, he came to him. So it is you who make decision where you want to go and what you want to be and the rest Muhammad saying here is nothing but fiction stories, stupid as it can be. And now, if you see the comment of the Muslims in this video, you will see that they will start saying things have nothing to do with the topic. The first comment will be, 
uh, Christian, you believe in Trinity. Uh, Jesus is not God. But those stupid stories is not the one they want to talk about because it's embarrassing, it's stupid, and obviously Muhammad is a liar. Who in the world want to believe that there is a prophet, his name is Solomon, and shaitans, they used to die for him, and some of them, they are in the chains. Who want to believe that Suleiman, he have a freed, like the one we see in the cartoon? Same time, if I discuss really the ethic of Satan, I will find Satan is more ethical than Muhammad himself. And we can give you tons of example. Because if, you know, I can say, I can challenge the Muslims right now to name for me one thing Satan he taught or he said or he liked to happen and Muhammad did not do in order to happen. From killing to raping to stealing to child molestation, you name it. Not a single thing Satan to lie. Lying is a big section in Islam, you know, some somebody might say to you, no, in Islam you cannot lie, that's not true. My friend, even your prophet says a man, a man he can lie in three cases. Lying to his family, to his wife, or even the wife lying to the husband, by the way, and lying to your friends, supposed to fix things, and lying to your enemies, the question who's left. Any Muslim can answer us? Who is left? You see, to say that lying is lawful is different from saying with liar is lying is sin, but if you repent, God forgive you. But when you make it a license, what kind of religion this religion is? And if a man he can lie to his wife, the man he can be honest with who? And if the woman she can lie to her husband, the woman she will be honest with who? This is inside the house. You see, the family is the first brick of the society. If that brick is based on lying, we lie to each other. How that can be? A woman in Islam, she have unlimited permission to lie to her husband. No limitation. Same for the man. The Prophet, he gave a permission of lying in anything except three. Three things. In war, canceling between people, and the conversation between the man to his wife, and conversation of the woman to her husband. Do you see it? You see, I can say, okay, the enemies, they told me, tell me your friends, etc. I'm not going to risk my... Uh, you know, my army, so I will not tell him the truth, and that will make me commit sin, still it's a sin, but it's better than causing my, you know, my friends to die. Yeah, but still it's a sin. Here, no, it's not a sin. A wife lying to her husband, what kind of wife, and a husband lying to his wife? And the Hadith says, the conversation of the women to the man, to the husband, any conversation, it doesn't matter what, it can be a lie. Like some Muslim, they say to you, what if your wife, she asked you if she is pretty? You will say to her, no. You better lie and say she is. And here you see that you cannot really marry a Muslim person based on this, because he can lie to you. He have an official license to lie to you about anything.
And the wife too, if you want to marry a Muslim woman, well, she has no guilt when she lied to you about anything. Where you been? Oh, I was in the grocery, but she was with her friend or doing something even evil. She's allowed to lie. The prophet said so. So, the explanation of the video that women is the one who deceive you, shaitan is in chain, but yet women are not. That's what Zach and is saying. So I don't know if I should change the name of the video from why, why shaitan, why do people commit sin if the devils are in chain? Maybe I should make it Zach and Naik saying, Shaitan is a chain in Ramadan, but women are not. Because he blamed the women here that she is the Shaitan who gets close to you. Very evil religion, but it's based in the teaching he learned from his fake prophet, Muhammad. And you know, ask yourself a very simple question. Who of you accept such a, such a religion that we can lie to each other. Who of you accept to have a family base? I lied to my wife, she lied to me. What is that? How we can live together? How we can trust each other? This is why when Muslim women, they get married, they do their best to suck the man income. They lie about things. As an example, oh, I spent the money, it's gone. She take it, she hire with her mother. Oh, your son, you know, I bought him new stuff. I know we took him, etc. And we know, blah, 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 blah. so they want, she want the man to keep paying her. And there is a reason for that, not only to steal the money, but because she had no security for tomorrow. And in the same time, she try her best to keep her husband poor. Because if he get rich, he will get a new wife. Getting a new wife for Muslims in Islam is like getting a new car. Like one of you says that uh, Ustaz, I don't know what his name, uh, if somebody is listening, the one who posts, he said that he married a new young girl and now the old wife became a junk. And this is exactly what Muhammad he did with Sauda. Sauda means to them. She became, according to the hadith, the story, the prophet, he don't go to see her no more. And he, she heard the news that he is going to divorce her because she is not good for boom, boom, no more. She's old. There's young ones. Why do you want to go there? So Muslim women, she do her best to keep the husband poor, to change, you know, I, I, I remember we have a neighbor, she told my mom, uh, and the sofas and the couches. So my mom, she said to her, you just bought him a few months ago. Why you want to change them? She said, oh, they have a lot of holes from cigarette on them. You know, the kids, they split. And later she told her, she said, listen, this is what we do. We are not like you Christians. We have to make him spend money. Otherwise he will save the money and the furniture will be bought for the new coming wife as soon he have enough money to get married. So I'm going to change furniture as much as I can. We burn it, we put cigarette in it, we put salsa on it, we put stuff on it, so it will look ugly and he will be forced to buy a new one. Otherwise, Tomorrow he will be more wealthy and he will go and marry a new woman. And this is the truth. So a Muslim woman, she, she do her best to suck the income of the husband because there's no trust. And as you see, how trust can be built in a religion, it says that the man, he cannot, should not be, he do not have to be honest in conversation with his wife and a wife she should not be honest or she don't have to be honest in the conversation with the husband so what kind of marriage this marriage will be so imagine my neighbor he is more honest to me than my wife and your neighbor is more honest to you from your husband I remember there's a Maybe some of you can find it. There's a there's a, a poor woman, a Western woman. She married a Muslim, and she said, "My husband did lie to me. He he's from Jordan. He keeps saying he is going on a vacation, 
and lately he is going too much for vacation to Jordan to see his family. Oh, my dad is sick. Oh, my mom is sick, etc. So every few months he go there, and then finally she found out that he is married to a young girl. So she was complaining in the Islamic website that my husband, he did lie to me. The sheikh, he said to her, first of all, you have no right to ask him if he is married to second women or not. Secondly, he can lie to you. So now this woman, she is shocked. Well, you are shocked because you are stupid. That's your fault. How you sign a contract without reading it? You know what I mean? When you sign a contract of marriage with someone, shouldn't you know what the contract is about? You marry a Muslim, he believes in Islam, that means he believes in this in the front of your eyes. He believes he can have four wives. He believes he can just replace you as replacing shoes. He believes that you are the devil. He believes he can beat you. He believes you are half a brain. So when you marry a Muslim man, you accepted the terms and the conditions of a Muslim man. For this is his religion. It is your fault, not his. Why you accept to marry such a thing? There is a, a Muslim woman. Uh, she used to come in Palto. She married a Muslim man, she have kids from him, uh, she is a good-looking woman, they put her in TV station in England to bring more English women to convert to Islam, and God knows how many they converted to Islam because of her, blah, 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 blah. She was a Muslim for like 10 years maybe, and then she discovered that her husband, he had many wives beside her. And suddenly, Islam became an evil for her. You see here, like, come on, don't you know Islam was evil from the beginning? You know, but because you have a man in the bed, for the sake of the man in the bed, you compromise. When the man, he left you, the religion is gone with him, for you never converted, you never been a Muslim, and you never liked Islam, but you wanted the man. Sadly, this is how some people they do. But anyway, at the end of the day, when you make a decision of marriage for someone to believe in such a thing, it is your responsibility and it's your decision for doing what you think is okay. So don't cry later. You have the right to lie to you. And you see, when we say this is what Islam teach, this is what Islam teach, which means Muhammad saying. So it's not a question if it is right or not. Nobody, nobody dare to question. Nobody have the right even to question why the man he can lie. And there's a hadith that says that a man will not be questioned for beating his wife. Imagine. Which means if you call the police and you live in Islamic countries and you say to them, my husband is beating me. Well, he will say to you, the police will say to you, oh, don't you know the, this is Islam, my friend. The prophet, he said, no man shall be asked for the reason of beating his wife. Do you see it? So if you think you can call the police and say to them, and they will, you will see that Muslim, they, they, uh, if the man he did beat you almost to kill you, almost you are dead, like he break your bones, then the police can be involved. But as long as he's beating you without killing you, without making you lose all your teeth and one eye and one, ray, one leg, it's fine. Nobody will ask him. And this is why Zakir Naik is making the women the reason of the evil. This is why in Islam, women, I mean, it's their nature according to Islam to be evil, to be the devil himself. That's why Muhammad, he says, women, they come in the image of the devil and they leave in the image of the devil. And look, Muhammad, he did not say, 
some women. Because I can say, yeah, I can say some women, I can say some men. But all women. In Arabic it says, إِنَّ الْمَرْأَةَ The women, any women, advances in the form of the devil, and she retires in the, in the form of the devil. So it doesn't matter if she is coming or leaving. She is the devil, no question. And that goes to any woman. And here you need to ask yourself, do you really accept to believe that your mother is the devil? Is that really what you think? Because remember, at the end of the day, you are born of a woman. So if the woman is the devil, you are born of the devil then. So who are you? You have half of her blood. It's not the man to blame. A woman walk by Muhammad, he jump over women to have sex. Who is the one to blame? It is the woman, for she is the devil. This woman, she is not wearing short skirt, she is not wearing bikini, she is just a normal woman wearing a burqa, and this is the best ethical person in Islam. This is like Nike, he said to us, Oh, a Muslim boy, a girl, she said to him, come to meet me, spend the night together, he will say, this is haram. Look at your prophet. Your prophet, he went to his own wife, Zainab, the same woman we are seeing the story about her, when the husband was not there, and he flirted with the wife, saying to her, praise be to Allah, the one who flipped my heart for you. And she is married to his own son. Was the devil in chain? No, because Muhammad is the devil. And he is still not in chain. But when the Lord, the Messiah will come, that will be the end of the devil. The real devil. It's a shame for us to let somebody spread such a teaching that the women is the devil, as if men are angels. Even Muhammad, he claimed that all sin happened is because of Eve. And the funny, most times they say we don't believe in original sin. But original sin for us is the sin of Adam, not the sin of Eve. However, both of them, they commit sin. But in Islam, the women change the reason. So Muhammad, he said, if not Eve, no woman betray her husband. He is saying to you that all women are one of the same kind. All of them they betray. Not a single one of them she is decent. This is the teaching of Muhammad. This is why Zakir Naik is teaching you that the women, the devil is in chain, but the women is not. But this is absolutely false. Because even if a woman, she made me do something, at the end of the day, it is me who did it. And you know, there's bad women and there's bad men. Who said there's, I mean, is men is the angels? I, I, I can say with no doubt that most of the crimes happening in this earth is by men, not by women. Especially killing, or, you know, violence, crime, most of it, for sure there's women they do violence too, but most of the violence crimes done by men. So why we blame the women for everything? This is the religion who sadly became their understanding for what life is about. We can't lie to each other, we can lie to the women, the women she can lie to me. This is why in Islam there is no marriage. Islam is nothing, a marriage in Islam is a sex contract, temporarily sex contract. You can lose your job anytime, you can be fired by a text message. You can search right now, you will see all Islamic countries approve that a Muslim man, he can divorce his wife by a text message. 
He don't even need to call you to explain to you. He just says you are divorced. I will search in Google, Prophet Google. He divorced her via text message several times. Can divorce occur by text message or email? Islamic questions. All those questions and the answer for them all, it says, yes, he can. This is how easy. Because in Islam, there's no marriage. You are just an employee. You finish your contract. He's the boss. He said to you, that's it. It's over. All right? Don't cry. Don't make a drama. Don't. You agreed to marry a Muslim. This is the terms and the conditions of this contract it's a sex contract you work for him even they have they go so far to the point they say like they have a kind of marriage they call it muta which is a woman is described as a musta'jara which means she is a rented woman rented women can you believe there's a religion believe that women are rented for sex and they call her wife what kind of religion what is the name of this religion Islam only in Islam you know sometimes when you you see the word Islam you think you are talking about a hippie a hippie cult and it is a hippie but I believe hippies they have more decencies way more decencies than the garbage of Muhammad I cannot really compare between the hippies I mean hippies they don't want to kill people etc generally speaking and they don't want to rape and you know they believe like uh, living like a uh, uh, you know, uh, free from everything, like animals. No rules. Islam put rules, and Islam teach killing, teach harming, and teach torturing, and the top of that teaching that we can rent women to enjoy them. And the funny, they call that marriage. And they have no problem, you see, this is Islamic website, they have no problem to call it by its correct name. Read carefully. This is the website, the Muslim website. In some work, a special term is applied to women who participate in muta. Muta mean uh, sexual uh, joy, like entertainment. Muta. Stinta mean enjoy it. Uh, Musta'ajra or rented. Musta'ajra mean rented. Rented women. Muta is considered as a kind of rental because general mean or means uh, general sorry a man's basic aim in this kind of marriage they call it marriage is a sexual enjoyment of the women a return of his enjoyment the women should receive certain amount of money or property but guess what this is not only goes for muta this is the normal marriage of islam the women should receive a wages for the man enjoying them. This is why the man, he paid the women. Let us say a man, a Muslim man, he divorced a woman. Do he do? Do he need to pay anything if he did not have intercourse now yet? No. He, he do not need to pay anything because simply he did not enjoy it, which is that, their vagina. So if he enjoy it, then he have to pay. This is why the Quran says, مَسْتَمْ تَعْتُمْ he which you enjoy or fit, not her, a fit, their vagina. So they have no problem to use the word rent. And not only that, the contract, you know, like when, when they, they do the marriage or they call it marriage, they say, uh, I rented you. Look at this. I have rented you. So the women, you know, he offer her money. How much you want to sleep with me for three days? I want to rent you. The woman she accept, she says that it's say a thousand dollar. The man he agree with the with the money and the terms of timing, which means you have to mention the time for how long, and you have to mention how much you will pay her. 
If she agree, then you say to her, I have rented you. Do you see it? And yet they call it marriage. So what the evil Muhammad he did, he changed the names of things. What is nothing but prostitution, he called it marriage. He just gave a different name. Ask yourself, what is the difference between this and prostitution? If the husband, by the way, die during this relationship, the woman, she have no inheritance, right? Nothing. She inherit nothing because she is just rented. How deceiving this religion is. And then he may say also, I have, uh, uh, I will accept the marriage or accepted the muta, which means temporary sex. If he should say only I accept and I am satisfied, the contract is valid. So they are teaching you how to do it. Like you go to a Muslim woman and you say to her, if she believe in this garbage, you know, uh, you say to her that and you are a Muslim too. You say, I want to rent you. She say how much you pay. You tell her how much you will pay, uh, how much you will stay, uh, you know, and then both of you agree. Then he say, okay, I rented you, and that's it. You go, she is yours. This is why Muhammad, he said, if a man, a woman, they can agree to stay together for three days, three nights, and if they like to increase, they can increase. Let us find the hadith, hold on. Allah Apostle said, if a man and a woman agree not to marry, you see the translation is false. They saw they put with it between two brackets to marry. There's no marriage. The word marriage is not there. They agree to Aishra, which means to, to share a bed together. To be together, to live together. Their live together, not their marriage, should last for three nights. And if they like to continue, then they can. This is for translation again. It's not like like to continue. It says if they want to increase, they increase. And if they like to decree, they, they, they stop, they separate. You see it? And then they say to you that the Muda marriage is cancelled. But why Allah He made it and then He cancelled it? If it is it marriage or not? If it's prostitution, then what kind of God He made prostitution marriage? Right? Well, Muhammad is stuck with number three. Everything Muhammad He do is based on number three. All, all his life, you know. Anyway, I think we, we explained the answer for you. Feel free to copy the video. And I want to say thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And uh, if you like always to be updated to our videos, you can join us on Patreon. And remember, we are not here to put the Muslims down. We are here to explain the cult of Islam. Muslims are victims. If I'm born of a Muslim family, I might be, you know, the same as the rest. Yeah, you know, there's many like this. Same as many, they claim to be Christian. They are born of a Christian family, but they don't know even what Christianity is about. So we are not here to talk about Muslims. We are to talk about Islam. And the biggest snakes, they are those who deceive the Muslims. You see, not only they give false answers, have nothing to do really with, 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 with the reality of what their prophet saying. They try to cover up the stupidity of Muhammad. Like you see, there's, there's people who they have decencies, they say, well, this is what the Prophet said, either you believe it or not. Like an, if an atheist now, he said to me, hey, Christian Prince, what is the proof that Jesus was son of a virgin? Should I go and make fabricated articles about, uh, you know, virginity and how it's possible, or how Jesus makes somebody, uh, he cannot, uh, he's blind. How he put, uh, you know, uh, some mud in his eyes and he make him see, uh, should I, or let's say somebody says to me, 
uh, whatever is written in the Bible. Should I deny it just to defend the Bible? So I lie, defending? Or I say, well, I'm a believer, I believe in this. You don't believe it, this is your business. So they don't do that. They try because they knew Islam is an embarrassment. They are embarrassed themselves. Otherwise, why he do this? Why he is lying? Why he didn't say yes? So that's what the Prophet said. Go and ask him. I don't know how this happened. What a, what a woman she is asking a, a boy to see her have to do with the shaitan is it chained. It's the shaitan who is chained. The woman is not chained. The question is about the shaitan. So now he made the woman is the shaitan. But even if the woman is the shaitan, she is chained or not. So in order to cover up the stupidity and the fictions of the prophet, we lie and we give false examples. And it's a shame for anyone to believe that women uh, is the devil because your mother is, the, is a woman. I challenge you to print what Muhammad said about your mother that the women she come in the image of the devil and she live in the image of the devil. Print it and put it in the top of your mother bed. Let us see how much brave you are. They tell her mom, look, I have a gift for you. Make a print and put it in the top of her bed in her room. She will be so proud of you. The women she come in the image of the devil, shaitan, Actually, he did not even say the word the devil. He said shaitan. This is the father of shaitan, of, of all evil. Do it. Let us see what we, your mother she would do. How much she would be proud of you. She will remember you forever. Are you ashamed of your prophet teaching? If you are not, print this hadith in the top. Put it in your living room. Let your mom see it every day. Let everybody remember the wise prophet. And here you see why it is not easy to be a woman in this cult. Women, they are treated not even as a second-hand citizen. They are not even a citizen. And they made tons of articles, this again about lying. In order to defend Islam, they fabricate tons of articles lying that Islam gave the women their rights. And before Islam, women, they have no rights. Isn't it the Muslim they say that Muhammad himself used to work for Khadija? So how women in Islam, they don't have rights? If he himself, his boss was a woman. Isn't it the Quran says that the Arab, they worship women? Worship women, literally. They believe they are goddess. It is the Quran who says, are you going to follow goddess who they are females? The first one who come with the idea rejecting God is who they are, females, is the Quran. And here Muhammad, he called the women are shaitans. Do you see it? Those women are shaitans. They call upon, but upon female deities. They call, but upon Satan. See who is the female deity in Islam? Shaitan. This is a chapter 4, verse 117. This is how far filthy the cult, how much is anti-women it is. And regardless of what you think about women, you need to remember one thing. If not women, you will not be exist. So you yourself who have a big mouth speaking against women, you need to remember that you or yourself are, is born of a woman. And that woman, she wants, one day, she have the chance or the choice to flush you in the toilet seat, if she want. This is how easy for the women to do it, if she want to do it. So if she's shaitan, then why should it not do it to you? So you are a growing man now, and now you have a mouth to say women are shaitan? Where you been when you were suckering her breast? When you have poopoo and she was cleaning you? 
It is a shame. This is a religion of shame. Shame and ugly and filthy teaching. And that's why we are here to warn you from this cult so you will not fear into the, such a trap. The man who don't respect a woman, not every woman deserves respect, but not every man deserves respect too. You see, we, we don't say we respect women because they are, they are women. We respect whoever deserves to be respected. So if it's a woman or a man, it doesn't matter. Your own respect, it's not your gender who make you respected. If the woman is wonderful, she is good, we respect her. If the man is good, we respect him. But not because you have a penis, we respect you, and because you have a vagina, we spit at you. That is disgusting. And the, one of the most important things for us as a Christian to remember that Christ himself, he came through a woman. So Christ, he honored the women. Christ, our Lord, all of us, we believe he's holy. He's our God. He came to us through a woman. Isn't it, this is wonderful? Because the Jewish always look at women down. Women are unclean, women, etc. They have their own system. The society of men. But Jesus himself, he come to us through Mary. Who of us dare to say to Mary, you are evil? Why she is evil? Oh, just because she is a woman. So the Lord himself, he honored the women by coming through Mary. And Mary present every woman who is decent. If you don't want to be decent, this is your business. But we don't say women are not decent just because they are women. Women and men, they commit sin. All of us, we commit sin. All of us, we are sinners. Not a single one of us is not a sinner. So why we want to say, and why we want to blame the women for sin? If we let men live alone, and there is an island, let us say, and there is no women at all, are they going to behave? Actually, I think they are going to do more the opposite, because there is something missing in their life. So maybe they will start raping each other, hmm? as they do like in jail. You put men together, they find a guy who is weak, they rape him. Hmm? Here we go, there's no woman there. There's no woman. It's a jail for men only. Only foolish people, they think in such a way. And we are here to warn you from the foolish one. For they are evil and they will never make you smart. Sit with a smart one, for a smart one will make you smarter. Sit with an idiot, fool, he will make you more foolish. In the Middle East we say, tell me who is your friend, I will tell you who, is you are, who you are. If you associate yourself with intelligent people, high quality people, you will get some of their quality. They will improve you. If you associate yourself with criminals, Rapist, child molesters, they will drag you down. A bad apple will make it a box of apples bad. Always evil is more effective than the good ones. This is why you have to be careful and you have to choose your friend wisely. And Muhammad cannot be our friend, for he is nothing but evil. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget to download the video before we take it down very soon. Take care. And this is your brother, Christian Prince. We say to all Muslims, we love them. We care for them. But obviously, Islam is evil. And we encourage you, Muslim, to reject this teaching. Love your mother. Love your wife. Respect the women who deserve respect. And if there's somebody who doesn't deserve respect, don't respect. As simple as that. Judge every person by his fruit or her fruit, not by their gender. Gender is for the foolish. We are created with gender, but it is not what makes us good or bad. That is a foolish understanding. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. Take care.